Life uh, on Facebook live stream. Uh, I've got in front of me Mark Jarrett, and uh, Mark Jarrett doesn't realize just how much of an instigator he has been uh, on the success of the virtual trade fair, um, uh, virtual trade fair dot Africa uh, platform since we've launched. And, and I can see he's putting an order in there for coffee. If we could get two, and if you could just uh, fax it through to me, a cup of coffee, I'd really appreciate that. So, Mark Jarrett, I met you uh, probably about four, five, maybe even six weeks ago as a result of lockdown. One of our members uh, from, uh, in fact, one of our primary sponsors at Always Community Chamber of Commerce, uh, stuck in Bali. Uh, turned around and said, no, listen, we've got to connect to this guy in the UK. Uh, and we, we got on to Zoom. I didn't know how to spell it at that stage. I thought it was X00M, but it's actually Z00M. And we met with Mark Jarrett uh, and they called their operation Never Ending Network 24-7. So Mark, that's an introduction. Tell us about yourself. Uh, give us a, a bit of the background. Uh, of who you were before you even got into this networking environment. In fact, start with, I was intrigued. I, I heard you mention the other day, Tenerife, um, Canary Islands. Uh, maybe start there and then hop over to Sussex and give us some of your background. Okay, I spent the rump of my career in telecoms. I was first to market with those ringtones and logos if you remember those, they only work with Nokia phones, but back then every other person had a Nokia. And uh, th that work went very well and um, I decided then, I knew that my future lay online and I figured if, if I'm going to work online, I can work anywhere. So why not go and live somewhere warm and sunny? So we moved from Hamburg in North Germany to Tenerife in the Canary Islands. And I uh, spent six years there. Um, and I actually, um, uh, from there, I, I, I uh, worked remotely for um, a Swiss company. Uh, involved with uh, with online billing. Um, the logos and ringtones was a resounding success. I then la launched something called Dial a Star, uh, which is where people could call and speak to celebrities to raise money for good causes. Um, that didn't work out so well because the celebrities ended up keeping all the money. And the idea was to uh, to uh, to allow people to to speak to um, celebrities uh, to to raise money uh, for good causes. Um, anyway, over the years, I built up quite a large network. Um, I started my career in banking and futures broking, and I was often um, taken to one side, quite rightly, for for chatting too much and being a distraction to my work colleagues. So I'm now using my gregarious nature to, um, to connect people. I, I love connecting people and, uh, and, and making introductions. Um, so I'm now using that skill set to, to do precisely that. And um, I run uh, several, uh, well, 90 WhatsApp groups covering all manner of uh, of, of themes, including mergers and acquisitions, retreats, startups, education. Um, Fabulous Futurist is an amazing group. It's full of engineers, scientists, doing some fantastic stuff. Um, Out of Africa is a, is, is a group that I formed that uh, uh, is all about helping the continent of Africa. Um, not so much you guys in South Africa, but you know the, the rest, the rest of the continent. Um, social enterprise, um, automation masterminds, which is headed by our uh, mutual friend Yofi, who um, uh, you now know. Uh, he's a furloughed uh, air airline engineer um, who's just really, really good with tech. 
and he can help you automate your processes to get to, to win new business and, and generate more leads. Um, investment opportunities, property. The thing is, we, there are so many, you could, anyone can create a WhatsApp group about anything. And in some ways, it's the long tail. The more niche a group is, the more likely it is that the magic will happen. Uh, for example, one of the groups is uh, about biotech. Now, I, I just don't have the first clue about biotech. It's all above me. But watching the people who do understand about biotech meet and connect, uh, it's very rewarding to, to when you see that there's a meeting of minds. And um, the main uh, weapon if you like, in my armory is, is WhatsApp, which of course is owned by Facebook and um, numbers vary, but I think there are about 2 billion users of WhatsApp globally. Uh, it's very popular in Europe. It's almost ubiquitous in India. Uh, strangely, the one country where WhatsApp hasn't really taken off is in its birthplace, the United States of America. Um, some of some people there uh, haven't even heard of it. Uh, this is quite extraordinary. Um, WhatsApp can be used to make calls and video calls. Although personally, I find it much more effective just, just to use it for texting because the line quality, you sometimes get beeps and it cuts out. So I use it primarily as a springboard to Zoom because obviously with texting, it's very linear and one-sided. When you can read someone's body language, um, it's much more powerful and you can cover so much more ground than just texting. Um, and the other platform I use is something called Remo, R-E-M-O dot C-O, which I describe as like Zoom on steroids. The trouble is with uh, Zoom, it doesn't lend itself to networking uh, th that well in as far as you're kind of uh, in control. You, you have to take the orders, if you like, from Trevor Nell, who's in control of that environment. Whereas Remo replicates a real world networking environment with a stage, tables, breakout areas, etc. So you're then at liberty to hop around as you would in a face-to-face -face, uh, networking environment um, and network, if you like, more, more naturally. The breakout rooms on, on Zoom are great, but again, it's up to the, um, the host of the event uh, to dictate who's in those breakout rooms, etc. Whereas Remo, it's much more, um, you can hop around like you would in a, in a, in a real world uh, networking environment. Now, I've been extolling the virtues of virtual networking long before coronavirus came along. It's got enormous advantages over face-to-face um, -face or in-person networking. The obvious beneficiary is the environment because we're not pumping a load of um, pollutants into the atmosphere by flying or driving to these networking events. The other advantage is that it's free. All intents and purposes, it costs, you know, uh, nothing. Whereas, you know, tomorrow I'm hosting an event with Sally Anderson, incredible woman, uh, who um, consults with uh, CEOs and uh, top-level C-suite um, celebrities and whatnot. Now, for me to come and see her in, Aust uh, in New Zealand would cost many, many thousands of dollars or ran. Um, but, uh, and, and no hotel costs. 
so yeah i mean you just save a ton of time and money by 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 networking this way and the other thing is is the globality of it <coughs> if you go to a networking event in johannesburg you're only going to meet people from the johannesburg area whereas online the world is your oyster i mean it's called the world wide web for good reason and tim berners lee has done us all an enormous favor um, because the, the, as thomas, thomas friedman pointed out in his best-selling book the world is flat he describes the interconnected world in which we now all live as a level playing field in terms of commerce where all competitors have an equal opportunity his book refers to the perceptual shift required for countries companies and individuals to re remain competitive in a global marketplace so now we've got this incredible opportunity to to compete with the big boys um you know historically going global was only really um available to to the the the, the, the massive multinationals like coca-cola and co now we can all uh, we all have access uh, to a global audience and we can operate virtually um, for example a lot of americans don't know how to make an international phone call uh, you actually have to, if you're in the united states you have to prefix your call with zero one one but a lot of them are quite US centric. They think the world starts in uh, Miami and stops in Los Angeles. Um, so I've actually got, you can get uh, with Skype, a Skype in number. Um, I've got a 917 number, a New York number. So they can just dial that and then it will ring uh, here in, in, uh, in Europe where I'm uh, located. So this whole, um, operating virtually uh, now uh, is, is relatively straightforward and you can give the uh, you can convey to to potential clients or customers or partners that you're actually um, operating in the country that they're in even though you're not uh, you're not necessarily physically uh, present there now um, coronavirus has destroyed the mice industry, um, meetings, incentive, conferences, and events. And it started off with the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. And then it had a chain effect. And as, as we all know, there are, there are no events um, uh, at this time. And social distancing is just not normal. It's, you know, human beings are, we, we, we are social animals. And it's counterintuitive, this, this whole um, social distancing. So now, right now, there is no other way to network than uh, virtual networking. Um, because networking at uh, sort of a two meter distance uh, it's not the same and i think about half of us or half of the uk certainly um even when lockdown is lifted properly are uh, inherently there's going to be a little bit of us that is worried about that that social uh, get, getting too close to, to to people physically but of course by networking virtually um we don't have that issue. Um, and uh, another little side pr uh, product of um, uh, virtual networking is some people, especially women, sometimes find networking face-to-face um, -face a little bit intimidating. And um, by, by, by networking this way, it's like public speaking. Some people just do not, they, 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 they fear 
almost, uh, you know, speaking in public. And some people are the same when it comes to, to networking. However, when you're networking virtually, you're, 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 you're more in control. Uh, it's up to you. You can, you can walk away, you can take a, a, a toilet break. And it's, uh, I don't know about you guys, but personally, I do enjoy both. I enjoy face-to-face -face and virtual. But at these networking events in the real world, I find that the networking environment sometimes can be a little bit too frenetic um, and not ideal to make that human connection. Because when you're trying to talk to someone face to face and there's five or six people around you who are all uh, networking, it's not always the best uh, environment in which to, uh, to network, uh, pa paradoxically. Um, Another advantage is, um, I mean, I'm a smoker. Uh, I, uh, I I enjoy um, um, cigarettes. You know, to, to, to smoke in a, a real world situation nowadays is absolutely out of the question. Um, of course, uh, by working from home and doing it um, remotely, um, I'm at liberty to do so. In fact, I find the whole term working from home a little bit misleading because we are at liberty to work as long as you've got a smartphone and access to the internet, we are at liberty to work uh, anywhere we, we choose. And in fact, the, uh, the Grosvenor Hotel at um, a Victoria Station in London is like a, a second office for me. Uh, that's where I have my uh, my London meetings. Um, and as I said, the reason I moved to Tenerife in the Canary Islands was because of the, of the globality um, of, afforded by um, the um, by the World Wide Web. One thing you're going to find out, uh, or, or a lot of companies are learning through the lockdown globally is that remote working actually works. Um, I spoke to a um, managing director of a tour operator a couple of weeks ago. Unfortunately, he's had to lay off um, 20 of his staff, but the remaining 60 staff are going to be kept on and they are going to be working from home. He's not going to be re uh, renewing the lease of his um, offices in the Mill Bank in London, Central London. And uh, because he, he, he realised as long as the work gets done, it doesn't really matter where, where the staff are. So, uh, and Twitter uh, announced last month that their people uh, are at liberty to work remotely ad infinitum. Uh, so I think we will see that uh, um, uh, trend continue. And who knows, may maybe the rush hour will be uh, consigned to the dustbin of history. Um, when you think about it, getting groups of human beings um, within a two hour window uh, to, 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 to get into the cities, uh, Maybe in 20 or 30 years from now, people will look back and regard it as a bit um, quaint, almost. Um, so, the other uh, thing I'd like to say is that a guy called Dennis Waitley uh, once pointed out that if you're not networking, you're not working. Um, networking at the end of the day business boils down to people and trust so if we can collectively join forces and build those networks um, together in, 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 a, in a spirit of trust and mutual cooperation um, it's, it's a good thing. Um, 
and it's an important and in that respect um brock who um i think you will agree is uh, a, a absolutely stellar uh, host and networker it, we, we totally see eye to eye on on uh, the importance of networking and um, don't think about the money think about the relationships build those relationships and the money will come and i really look forward to working with you um trevor and ivan and all of you uh in in, in the chambers over there and getting a bit of anglo um south african uh, uh commerce going i've already got my eyes now on, on uh, the other english speaking markets uh new zealand australia and uh i'm going to save the um the big one till last the united states obviously uh is is, is the big one but the thing is it's all going to fit in together because we're all now networking together so who knows trevor maybe in um uh, a month or two from now you you will pull off some great deal by introducing someone in your network to one to to a high flyer based in los angeles and you'll sit in the middle of that deal and make a great deal of money but remember, money doesn't make you happy, but it's impossible to be happy without, without, the, uh, without the money. Um, in terms of um, how, how any of you can start to, 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 to network virtually, as I say, um, WhatsApp is a very, very powerful tool. It's great for facilitating introductions. Uh, I've lost count of how many mini groups I've uh, created. Uh, those are groups of just uh, me and the two people that I'm connecting. Uh, and then, in fact, the education group morphed out of an introduction I made between two people that are uh, involved in education. And it's now become this group of about, I think, uh, 40 people who are all involved with education, who are brainstorming, swapping ideas and news uh, and making not just business contacts, but friendships. Um, so it, it's a wonderful thing. So what I suggest you do is identify what really floats your boat. What are you an expert in? What do you love? This could be anything, nanotechnology, uh, beekeeping, uh you name it and then create a whatsapp group on that subject and then uh, you can use uh, linkedin of course is very powerful a uh, way to reach out to new people and then in your invitation message to that individual you search for beekeepers you um uh, then reach out to um the individual and say hi i've just started up a uh, i've got a beekeeping um whatsapp group would you like to join it question mark now nine times out of ten they're going to say yes why not there's nothing to lose and uh, there's going to be synergies and um, uh, you know we can all talk about beekeeping so you'll find that um the acceptance rate to such invites uh is very high uh, because you're not actually selling something you're, you're you're just saying hi you know do you want to um to join a group about something that you know that they're already passionate in then uh it, it, it it's your group you can then assign people to 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 manage that group um on on your behalf um and then you can team up with people like me and we can then join forces together. I can then ask my network, hey, is anyone uh, interested in beekeeping? 
and then uh, if anyone bites, they they become members of, of your group. So um, cross pollination. Excuse the, uh, uh, the the pun there, but yeah, to to, to cross pollinate networks and purge networks uh, is is very important. I find that there are uh, three main types of people when it comes to networking. There are people, as I touched on earlier on, who, who can't stand it. It frightens them. It intimidates them. They don't want to do it. And they would rather hire someone like me to, to network on their behalf. Then the second group of people are people who kind of like networking, but they just don't have the time. Um, and then the third group are people um, who, who uh, like you, Trevor, enjoy networking and, and uh, are, are receptive to, to, to teaming up and connecting the dots together. Uh, another way to get people into your tribe is by um, uh, using Twitter and searching for hashtags pertinent to what your uh, subject matter is. So in the, in the case of beekeeping, again, hashtag beekeeping on Twitter, you're going to find lots and lots of beekeepers. Uh, and then uh, you can invite them into, uh, you can send them a tweet. And of course, if they follow you back, um, then uh, you, you can DM them, direct message them, and you've got a, uh, a direct uh, uh, way to communicate with them as well. So, um, perhaps not surprisingly, that the best way to uh, communicate with me uh, is uh, via WhatsApp. Um, my uh, number is country code 447906786505 and then once we're commun uh, once we've connected on on whatsapp i'll send you a list of all my uh, 90 odd groups and then you can cherry pick the ones that um, float your boat uh, and then the, you'll see an invite link and you just click on that link once you're in a room, when you enter a room, you need to introduce yourself in, in, in three or four sentences, outlining your full name, what you do, who you're looking to meet, and also something personal like your, your hobbies or your family to show your, 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 your human side. Uh, don't forget to mute the groups very important otherwise your phone will just drive you nuts um, also it's very important to use whatsapp on your computer because heaven knows we're, we're looking at these smartphones enough as it is already so you can marry your pc your laptop or your um, pc to your smartphone by going to web dot whatsapp dot com you'll then see one of those scan codes uh, on there you then go to web whatsapp web on your smartphone it will tell you what to do you just marry the two up and you'll find that whatsapp is well i personally find it much more productive by using it on my uh, on my pc so um i'd like to close by um uh, quoting a, a wonderful uh, quote, it's actually uh, uh, an African proverb, um, if you want to go fast, go alone, if you want to go far, go with others. And I think that encapsulates the, the essence of, of, of networking. It's to join forces with like-minded human beings, uh, to forge friendships, and to ultimately do business and make money in a spirit of trust and love. Thank you.
Thanks, Mark. You're such a loving person on the other side there, as I am on this side. And you can see Ivan, he's trying to hold the giggles back in. Um, Mark, you know what I'd like you to do? Uh, there was a gent this morning who had to disappear, unfortunately. Uh, he had to take his wife off uh, uh, to the doctors or somewhere along the line. I hope I'm not giving too much uh, information away, Tony. Um, but have you met, ever met with Tony Koppel? I have not. You have not. Fantastic. And uh, clearly, Tony then hasn't met with you. Uh, so for the first time, uh, you guys are meeting together. And I'd, I'd like to hear how you actually begin networking with a complete stranger. So give it a go. Uh, with a complete stranger, and um, I, I tend to be a little bit cheeky, humorous. Um, no, 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 you haven't caught my drift. There's Tony Koppel. We're all listening in to your first time networking with Tony Koppel. He's on board. Chat to Tony. Tony, how are you? Where Hello, is he? Mark. I'm listening. I'm listening. Hi. Hi, Tony. Good to see you. In which part of, um, of, of South Africa are you located? I'm in Worcester, Western, Western Cape, but I'm also from England originally, like you. Which part of England? London. Which part of London? Sutton. Sutton. Very good. Very good. Do, do you have fond memories? Oh, yes, but I was quite young then. I've been out of the country for 35 years, something like that. I immigrated to Canada, and now I'm in South Africa for three years. Okay, well, if ever you do come back over and don't look me up, I'll be very cross with you. You can bet your life on it, Mark. Fantastic. And I know also that anywhere you are in the world, I can just reach you so easily with WhatsApp. I totally agree with all your good comments about it. And how do you normally make uh, uh, earn a living, Tony? Uh, I'm retired, but I'm a missionary. This is my fourth career. Very good. My, my, my father figure and mentor is a guy called Eugene Gottesman, who founded the New York Yellow Pages back in the day. Um, he retired for three days. And then he founded the uh, Gottesman Company, which has grown to become America's largest network of independent M&A brokers. He turns 91 this year, and he is fitter than most people half his age. And I attribute that to the fact that he never stopped working. Because the brain is a muscle, you know, and uh, he just loves doing deals. And uh, I, I, th I, I think that he... Uh, it's so mentally agile still because he never stopped working. So don't do it, Tony. Don't retire. Keep going, mate. Uh, retirement was just a, 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 shall we say, a financial term. I'm far more engaged and busy now than I was when I was earning a, a monthly salary. Of course, it's very different. If you work in a coal mine, then, you know, I can understand why retirement is, is quite attractive. Um, but for... For those of us who are using, you know, in the brain game, if you like, uh, yeah, um, we, we can just um, continue uh, working until we drop. Totally agree. I mean, we've all seen old people in old people's homes who watch television all day. Right? Yeah, I can't imagine how unbelievably boring that must be. Well... <laughs> couldn't agree more um you know um, it, it, it's sad and that's why i think it's important you know people like uh like trevor trevor is 65 now technically he should be retiring because mind you it was a different world back then when, when it was decided that 65 is the the age that people should retire um, because of course we're all living much longer now but um, I think, Trevor, you're, you're only just getting going, aren't you, mate? And Mark, Absolutely. Uh, Trevor will tell you that he retired when he was 36, but uh, that was only a year or so ago. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and um, and, and I've, I've just got this age overnight trying to work with Ivan. But um, you know what I'd like to do, uh, Mark, at this stage? Um, I found your style... Um, you're very much a relationship builder style. 
and and I wanted to pick up because um, uh, you know I go straight for the jugular straight away, and and I haven't had a chance to engage with Tony myself, and I wanted to get an idea of what it is that Tony is doing right now. Um, so what's your biggest excitement, uh, Tony? I haven't even had a chance to go and have a look at your exhibition. And that's what I wanted to connect here as well, to get an understanding. What is it that you're doing on as an exhibitor? What are you looking to promote to the marketplace? Uh, what, what's got your fancy? Uh, well, one of the things I discovered when I came to South Africa, and this is completely separate from my, my main work uh, as a missionary, is a thing called GIG which was started by Jasper, and you know Jasper. And I, I got involved in GIG because I've been a financial planner most for the last, uh, my third career. And I'm so excited by what GIG is doing. And I had the pleasure of recording the audio version of Jasper's book, uh, Legacy. So that's now available on iTunes and Amazon. And so one of my my stalls here on this virtual trade show is offering my services as an audio book uh, narrator. And I have had one inquiry so far, but it could lead to something. And I only want one. I can only do one at a time. Listen, is there anything better than 100% success? Uh, one out of one. Now, can you imagine uh, if we, we can have a million consumers coming past you and you have the same conversion rate? Uh, uh, listen, Tony, I want a slice of your business, that's for sure. Um, but, uh, but also, uh, I think that's quite interesting, Mark. Uh, so when you hear uh, Tony uh, explain that he is an audio book narrator, um, how would you strategically... Uh, provide information back because I've heard how good you are, Mark, at actually repositioning individuals. I don't know, Tony, I haven't had a look at his site, I haven't had a look what it does, uh, but I'd like you to go down the route of what it is that you do online so well in helping people to think about their positioning and how to get uh, plenty of hits using social media technologies. Go for it, Mark. Okay, well, in that but in Tony's case, you, you know, connecting dots, uh, it would be I, I, about five years ago, I helped a US company called Vocal Booth to Go, who do mobile uh, 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 um, recording studios and sound blankets. Um, and through that, I met a lady who heads Amer uh, the UK's um, voice. Um, voice artists uh, uh, network and um, she would have no doubt have contacts of people who are involved in audio books and then you know tr try and connect dots that way to do it the cold way i would do it the, the how i described i would use i mean linkedin is such a powerful search engine uh, and if you drill down when, when you perform a, a search on LinkedIn and then click the people button, uh, then you will see hundreds, if not thousands of people that uh, meet the criteria uh, that you're, um, of, of the people that you're uh, looking to, um, to reach out to. Um, Twitter, more, more secondary. Uh, but again, with, with social media, the, the results are directly correlated to the effort you put in. If I spend the rest of today on LinkedIn nonstop, reaching out to fellow networkers, for example, I go and find them. There's no shadow of a doubt. Um, but you have to put the time and the effort in, in order for, for social media uh, to pay. And you have to constantly learn. I mean, there's something called TikTok. I mean, I don't have the first clue about TikTok. All I know is it's huge and it's visually driven, a bit like uh, Instagram. And um, I need to, to learn about these things. Otherwise, you become a dinosaur and uh, uh, just keep, keep, keep an ear out to, to what's happening. Uh, and uh, hopefully in a few months, I'll be TikToking away with you, Trevor. TikTok. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yep. Uh, well, you'll be TikToking with my granddaughter, 11 year old, because she's a, a mistress. I was going to call her a master, but a mistress at this now. Uh, yeah. But Tony, I've got some ideas for you later. Um, I've given you too much exposure on this platform. Is there anyone else now uh, at the moment uh, that would like to open up? Just open up your mic uh, and uh, ask away a question for Mark. I, I see we're, we're at about 20 minutes to go in this session. Let's, let's say 15 minutes to go in this session because we're going to have a five minute break uh, for the final the final session of virtual trade fair dot africa you, you, you saved the best until last i think we did and i don't know who it is it might be yasma but we'll we'll have a look now it was mark jarrett who who was the closing portion and then we're going to chat about uh uh what we are doing uh, in converting from what we have developed here into the trade mall so uh Right, Ivan, can you? Yeah, Trevor, yeah, so I'd, I'd, I'd just like to correct you. This is the final session of the pilot event of our very first operation, and there are going to be many more. It's not the final. If you just say the final session, it sounds like we're stopping here. We're definitely not stopping here. This we're just is the, beginning. Just the beginning, absolutely. Thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> anyone Anyone uh, got a question there for Mark that they'd I like? I think An Annie's got a question. Annie Go is amazing. Yeah. Aren't you, Annie? I'm busy. I don't know about amazing. You, you are the I've original been, busy bee. I've been keeping any any busy while you've been talking, Mark. So we've. we've <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it's like having another Brock in the room. I've realised. Well, there's only one Brock, uh, and uh, I just love his professionalism and and the, the ethos, uh, and uh, having a team with um, with you in it. Um, you know, great team. I'm really looking forward to working with you and taking this idea, um, of taking your brand global. What's not to like? You know, oh, absolutely. we can seriously go global with this. You know, and... Yeah. Uh, well, I wanted to come on because, um, A, I just wanted to come, I was on this morning and I just wanted to come back and kind of get a, a different feel for, for what was going on because I think this is really exciting for everybody. Um, I run a virtual business, so, you know, I can be anywhere in the world while I sit in my beautiful place in Cornwall. Um, but also I wanted, obviously, me and Mark are starting to work a bit together now as part of the Your Partnership stuff, but I haven't actually had the opportunity to just listen to Mark and actually hear about his thoughts and his version and what he thinks. So that's why I thought I'd just sort of sneak in the room, so to speak, and just be able to sort of sit and listen uh, to, to Mark's vision as well for it because obviously that's going to come back into a lot of what I do going forward uh, working with your partnership so well you're lucky normally I charge one ninety nine a minute <laughs> was that one, so, one, one, one pence one pence Mark? <laughs> giving your age away again <laughs> and yeah I mean like your dawn's here as well and you know, we, we communicate quite regularly, and uh, it, it's wonderful uh, to to build these uh, to build these relationships and these networks collectively uh, to, together. Mark, maybe for the folk who weren't on on uh, on the launch this morning of your partnerships, maybe just tell them, you know, what's happening and and what we what we did this morning and and what's going to be happening going forward with uh, with that. Okay, Annie, correct me if I'm wrong. But your partnership started off as a face-to-face um, -face networking organization and operated very, um, uh, I think, th three or four years now. Uh, and you've got the southwest of the UK covered totally. It's uh, just been over just over two years. So yeah. it's phenomenal, the growth we've had in that time. Yeah. So when it comes to um, arguably the UK's most beautiful part, the Southwest, uh, you've got that covered. I think you've got designs on going national. And we are sneaking up the country as we speak, yes. So originally I was talking to Brock about the possibility of um, helping out in um, Sussex and Surrey, where I am. And then we're going to have the Hampshire bit in the middle that won't be covered, but we could cover it. Anyway, long story short, 
we shelved all that. You're going to do your UK stuff, and I'm going to help take you guys global by um, focusing on everything else apart from uh, the still just United Kingdom. <laughs> Yeah, no, that that pretty much sums it up. Yeah, it's a it's a network based on real relationships and people actually wanting to come together and help each other. And that started off in Cornwall with that ethos, which is very much a an area which has um, a lot of micro businesses, a lot of small businesses. Obviously, we're very agricultural, a lot of farmers. Um, so it's not like a, a London setup in that sense, but. The ethos of your partnerships is very much what it seems that people around the country want. So it's, uh, we keep sneaking up the country. We've done Devon. We're going into Somerset. Those, for those that you know the country, we're kind of coming up and uh, just taking over, basically, is kind of how I think we'll put it. <laughs> and Corona was the catalyst, wasn't it, for you? I mean, we, you were doing four or are doing four events online per day. Yep. To bring in between 30 and 50 people, roughly. You know, that's, uh, that's heavy going. Uh, and, um, yeah, now that's just going to get more and more and more. Uh, and uh, I just hope that uh, uh, Brooke can keep up. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's going to be doing a Trevor and Ivan. Yeah, I'm not worried about Brock keeping up. It's everybody else keeping up with Brock, I think, is where that sits. <laughs> got you, got you. Well, I, you know, I, I, think, I think that's absolutely key. And I think you guys that are on this forum right now, you know, you, you're on the cusp of, of, a, of a launch that uh, with the Chamber, you know, Virtual Trade mm -hmm. Fair and your partnerships, we're going global, you know, and Mark with his, his, his connections, you know, across the world, uh, um, you know, there's, there's just the there's reach that is going to go exponential here. And, and I think it's going to travel very quickly and very fast. And, and so I really encourage you to stay connected into this forum, get connected into your partnerships and get onto some of Mark's uh, what, WhatsApp mm. groups and, and make these things happen because it's, it's the way of the future of business, I believe, is, is getting connected, staying connected and interacting. And I think the key is, Mark, that, that you spoke about earlier for me is, is it's not the fact that you you have a social media presence or you're connected to a network or you're part of a membership site. The question is, what are you doing? What is your engagement level? How how active are you in those in, in those environments? And uh, the more active and the more engaged people are, you know, again, it becomes a you know an exponential uh, snowball, as it were, rolling down the hill. I think. And uh, yeah, no, I, think I think the only boundaries going forward are going to be the boundaries put against their, themselves, because I think with this type of networking and these type of connections, there doesn't need to be any. Yeah. Yeah. And and if I can come in, uh, please, Mark, if you don't mind, uh, just to try and do a connection here with with any. Um, any, yeah, don't you mute yourself. I'm, I'm going to ask, <laughs> why are people jumping on board? And um, what have you found? Uh, why do they need you? Why are you up to four of these sessions a day? What, what are they saying to you? What are you picking up is, is the hot button behind your partnerships? Well, I think some of it comes down to, as Mark was saying, people aren't always comfortable with their first few face-to-faces so being on zoom gave people um a, a way of being in a room without actually kind of feeling as though they, they could kind of sneak off and hide behind the camera uh, but i think a lot of it was when coronavirus hit nobody knew what was going to happen everybody just went into what am i going to do am i going to have a business am i not going to have a business how can i still meet people and we were one of the first i think that got straight onto zoom i mean within a few days of knowing what was happening we'd set up um, we were having three or four meetings a day at that point. We just threw them out. And then we went up to six at one point and we went, no, this is just too tiring. So we're going to bring it back down again. Um, but we did a lot of different things. So we have a social hour we, uh, that people can just come on, connect, but more relaxed. It's not all about the business. But it, we kept the ethos that runs behind your partnership, which is about build relationships, talk to each other, connect to each other. It's not about, you know, can you do business with me it's about who do i know that you need to talk to yes. and that, that still holds throughout all of it and i think partly because we were one of the first to jump on it in the uk and partly because we have just kept it going we've just kept the momentum yes. we've added this all the time we've listened when people have said oh that didn't really work i didn't like that type of meeting we're going 
okay, well, we're going to do one called The Big One, which is on a Thursday, and that just has hundreds of people on it. Yes. <laughs> well, 70 or so. Um, yes. uh, down to the smaller, we've also got smaller area ones. So just Cornwall has one or just North Devon has one. Um, and they, so that people in those areas who are still that little bit like, oh, not sure, can kind of go, oh, I'm going to network just with the people in my area because I, you know, my business is such, I just need to do that. I'm not going to look global. Yeah. So we kept the ethos, I think behind can what I, we I, do can i suggest a new format for you annie just that you can work on how about four solid days of eight <laughs> hours per day <laughs> from nine o'clock through to five o'clock i'm a little mad but i'm not a complete lunatic trevor i'll <laughs> leave that with you <laughs> uh, well, we've got a couple of lunatics out in yes Mark. <laughs> i find that the the more niche a, a, a whatsapp group is uh the the the, the more uh, effective it can be so it's not necessarily a case of the bigger the better um, and uh, as a joke I created a whatsapp group um, uh, last month uh, uh, all about avocados okay and it was just a joke and it's now spiraled out of control and it's become this avocado utopia uh, where people chat about um, avocados all day long uh, but I'm, I'm keeping that off the radar. That's not part of the list. <laughs> but you're, uh, I look forward to, to meeting you guys in, 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 in the groups and introducing you to some quite extraordinary people. Um, absolutely in awe of, of some of the people in my network. Um, you know, it's an honour to, to, to engage with such, such people. And it's, it's difficult to get people's attentions nowadays by email forget it you know people are just bombarded um, but in these closed communities uh, if, if you focus on the, um, the human angle and make those connections it's rewarding for everyone so Mark uh, I, I really want to say thank you for for really closing the speakers events and and keeping it at a high for us. I mean, we began on a high on Friday morning. Uh, we're ending up on a high right now. Uh, we're going to have a closing hour talking about the next um, iteration of this virtual trade fair dot Africa uh, over the next hour. So we'd like to invite uh, everyone uh, hang in and get to hear what's happening uh, because we're just going to magnify the opportunities from here on in. But Mark, um, I, I regard you as one of the primary catalysts uh, behind all of the, the networking and social networking and the quality of speakers uh, that we've managed to attract from Australia, the UK. I, I know we missed out on, on one of the best uh, from New Zealand, uh, but we're gonna be saving her as a surprise for our next event. Uh, and you know who I'm talking about. I won't mention Sally Anderson's name at all, but um, <laughs> going to be an absolute winner. I know that, but uh, I, and I'd just love you to turn around to her. I didn't want her to get up at one o'clock in the morning uh, and, and have to come on board here. Um, so we're going to save her for early in the next uh, session. And that, that's a very important theme that she's talking about, closing closing is so important and i'm i'm not particularly good at it i'm i'm a good opener but closing the deal is um you know you you've all well i was surprised you haven't seen glenn gary glenn ross you've got to watch that movie uh, you know always be closing at the I end of the day I sales boils down to closing I don't have time for, for movies. I'm too busy talking to individuals at the chamber and, and we It busy. came out in 1992, Trevor. Oh, no. Well, I'm, I'm not old enough for that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so listen, a big round of applause for Mark Jarrett.